And good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Local Dish with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. This is our video version of the Idea Exchange. So if you're listening on the radio, AM 1430 WBEV, you'll be able to hear everything that's going on. If you have access to a smartphone, an iPad, or your computer, then you can download dailydodge.com. Hopefully you already have that downloaded, so you can go to those devices and you can watch the entire program today from now until 11 o'clock. We are going to be doing some grilling with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly because of course this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, kind of is the unofficial start of summertime. So we thought it would be great to do an outdoor uh, video for you. This is our uh, uh, first attempt at this so you know we I started out doing a radio show never thinking when I first came to the radio station that I would have my own program then we went to doing uh, the uh, idea exchange as a part of a video a live video broadcast and uh, I was very surprised at that and now we've even taken it up another level and we've brought the show to you outdoors so who knows where this will take us? The, uh, <laughs> the cars that are going by, you can hear the, uh, the horns tooting. And we've got the grill started. You might even be able to see the, uh, the, uh, the charcoal as it's getting ready uh, before we start that part, part of the program. So just want to remind everybody, dailydodge.com, click on the video tab and you will be able to watch the entire program. Bill Lysis will be coming in at 10 o'clock. We also have a special guest coming, and from the tooting of the horn, maybe you already know who that is because he is here and out by the roadside. Um, I also wanted to tell you that you can send comments, you can call in, maybe you have a, a grilling question for Bill when we get to that part of the program, you can call in. You can also email me, ideaexchange at goodkarmabrand.com dot com that's idea exchange all one word lowercase at goodkarmabrands.com and you can send your favorite summertime recipe. The apron that I have here, we uh, have a number of those that we will be giving away throughout the rest of the year whenever we do a local dish with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. They're really nice aprons, uh, two pockets, adjustable. So if you would like to uh, uh, attempt to win one of those, what I'm asking for is your favorite recipe for summertime. That can be a beverage, it can be a snack, it could be a side dish, it could be something using the seasonal fruits and vegetables. Maybe you have a great marinade that you always like to use for grilling out. Maybe it's a great rub or just a main dish that you like to cook on the grill. Maybe it's a dessert or uh, an ice cream or frozen kind of treat. Share that recipe. We will put it in a drawing. We've already collected, I think, four or five of those. And I'm hoping to get a lot more that we can maybe devote one of our ID exchange issues to. But one of those names will be drawn for an apron. If you check the website from yesterday, um, Altine Hessebeck came in to pick up her apron. We took a picture of her, and so I put her recipe back on the recipe pages. Again, go to dailydodge.com, click on the recipe tab, and you can see that recipe from last month when we did our breakfast ideas. In the beginning of my show, I always like to do um, a local food uh, or the bizarre holidays of the day. If you go to dailydodge.com, you will find uh, today's recipe because it's escargot day. Uh, we've got a recipe for easy garlic escargots. You just need one seven ounce can of escargots, which are actually snails, drained, six tablespoons of butter, one clove of garlic, minced, 20 mushrooms, stemmed, one third cup of white wine, one third cup of cream, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, a pinch of ground black pepper to taste, a quarter teaspoon of dried tarragon, and a quarter uh, cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Now you place the escargots in a small bowl, cover with cold water, and set aside for five minutes. This is going to help remove the canned flavor uh, that they may have. You preheat your oven to 350 and lightly grease an 8 by 8 inch baking dish. 
Drain the water from the escargot and pat dry. Melt the butter with the garlic in a large skillet over high heat. And then add the escargot and mushroom caps. Cook and stir until the mushrooms begin to soften, about five minutes. And then you're going to whisk together the wine, cream, flour, pepper, and tarragon in a small bowl until the flour is no longer lumpy. You pour this into the skillet, bring it to a boil, and cook, stirring occasionally until the sauce thickens about 10 minutes. Then remove the skillet from the heat. Use a spoon to place the mushrooms upside down into your prepared dish. Spoon an escargot into each mushroom cap and pour the remaining sauce over the mushrooms into the baking dish. You sprinkle with some grated Parmesan cheese and you bake until the Parmesan has turned golden brown about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, you can find that recipe at dailydodge.com. Just click on the recipe tab. And the very first time I ate escargot was in eighth grade home ec class. We had to prepare a meal and then we invited our teachers. And I remember escargot, we did a, a French cuisine theme and uh, escargot was one of those items. So I do remember tasting them. I think that was the only time that I had escargot. But if you have a great recipe and you would like to share that, you can call in tomorrow or any time next week. Uh, it is also a tiara day and um, the Morse code was invented on this date or was brought out on this date. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, I have some patriotic edible and non-edible craft ideas to show you. So we'll be right back. And Ultimate Sewing Machine Repair is now introducing the Eversown Sparrow line of sewing machines. Schedule a time with Daniel to demo an innovative new brand. The Eversown Sparrow offers good quality and is user friendly, a perfect lightweight choice for travel. There are four different models to choose from and each one holds an attractive price point. The Sparrow line encourages all generations of crafters, sewers, quilters and artists to take their creativity to flight. It will be love at first stitch. Call Daniel at Ultimate Sewing Machine today at 920-928-AULT. That's 928-2858, a Fox Lake number. And this portion of the ID Exchange is brought to you by Hookster's Market and Greenhouse on Highway A in Fox Lake. Like them on Facebook and visit online at hookstras.net. That's H-O-E-K-S-T-R-A-S dot net. We got a caller, Brenda. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'd like to put a recipe on. Okay, is it a quick one? Uh, yes. Is is it for the uh, um, the contest? Yep. Okay, I do not have any way that I can take down the recipe right now. So okay. would you be able to call back tomorrow? Sure, sure, okay. no problem. Okay, that would be great because we're doing our um, video portion today and um, I want to make sure that we get everything down correct. So um, if you call back tomorrow during the program, we'll get you entered into the contest, okay? Sure, thank you. All right, sure. Thanks for calling. With um, the patriotic holiday, with Memorial Day kicking off summer this weekend, I have some patriotic edible crafts that I would like to show you. The first one is, I just titled it Red, White, and Blue, and all of these, the instructions will be on the website after the program today. What you need is just a tray or a plate or a platter of any kind. You can do various sized containers. What I did is got red, li red licorice for the red portion white covered pretzels uh, that you would fill um, a jar or um, a vase or a shallow glass, whatever. Different shapes work great. And uh, you can fill, fill that up for your white portion. And you would set that on the tray. And then for the blue, you can get the edible or the um, a patriotic M&Ms. I love M&Ms and baking with M&Ms because throughout the year you can uh, get various different seasonal colors. You put those on and you have a uh, red, white, and blue centerpiece that then is edible for all of your guests to enjoy. I'm just going to slide that over there and hopefully that will weight down the tablecloth. We've got a little bit of a breeze, uh, but that is uh, making the uh, coal smell so good. There's nothing better than a charcoal grill going. And I wish we had uh, 
sense around a sound as well. Well, well you will get the sound and the sizzle of the grill, but also um, the, the uh, smell of that because uh, when you've got something cooking on the grill, it is just uh, fantastic. The next uh, thing I'd like to show you is Patriotic Pops. Who doesn't love Tootsie Roll Pops? Again, um, I picked up these trays, I think, at the dollar store. Um, you can find lots of different kinds. You might have a, a red tray or um, um, just even a serving platter that you could use. Um, this was a set of dishes that I used to have once they all got chipped. I still had a lot of the coffee cups because I don't drink coffee. So I am using that as my base. And then you just cut a little piece of styrofoam. You push that down. You could do something just like this with a smaller container, uh, but otherwise you just work through and uh, we're going to put the, the Tootsie Roll Pops and just so, sort of uh, proportion them into your container. And again, you can just go through your house and you'll be surprised at what you can find um, whatever the season is maybe it is uh, for halloween and you can find some things that you can use for decorations sometimes you can use a decorative scarf uh, as a table runner or um, pick up some placemats and use that as your um, a defining piece for the centerpiece and again you just fill this up um, target is another place where you can get a lot of items for a dollar um, i like to go there to get uh, fun things that I can decorate with. This would um, make a great gift if you want to take along, if you're going to a holiday party um, and you've got just a fun little centerpiece, again, that people can take when they leave the party or they can enjoy this during the party. We need to take another break, but we'll be back after these messages. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. And uh, before we get back to the edible and uh, non-edible patriotic ideas for you today, I wanted to, uh, there goes the wind, there goes my props, hold on. <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you um, McKinstry's word of the day, the bingo word of the day. Uh, it's time for McKinstry's bingo word of the day. And today, May 24th, the word is dinette set. A dinette set is a great place to have a meal. If you have today's word on your bingo card, record today's date under the word, and when you have a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal line, or four corners filled in, you can take your card and return it to McKinstry's Home Furnishings at 131 Front Street in Beaver Dam for a chance to win a chair and ottoman valued at $1,200. Again, today's word for May 24th is dining dinette set dinette set is today's word uh, the next item that I want to show you I did not have time to um, bake cupcakes last night because I was celebrating both my my son and my daughter-in-law um, both have birthdays in May so they came over to the house last night and uh, we celebrated their birthdays but <clears throat> I went to Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly because they have a great bakery department and um, I picked up um, vanilla cupcakes um, decorated in the patriotic themes and what you do here is just get a you can go to the dollar store you might have a small oh my gosh everything's blowing away I have to take a minute and just kind of secure the props here okay I think that should hold it so you just get these um, little plastic cups or go through your cupboards or cabinets you might have glass wine glasses if you don't have little kids you can certainly use those and um, you're gonna get the um, the patriotic M&Ms and you just want to fill the, the cup um, oh, about halfway to three quarters of the way full. Um, everybody who gets this quick and easy little dessert can enjoy the M&Ms and then you just take the um, cupcake, you place it, mm, yum, you place it in the um, the little wine glass and again just a little tray that you might have and you can have those all sitting out uh, for everybody to pick up and enjoy and sometimes having just an individual dessert is easier and less messy than trying to do a big cake or trying to do um, 
uh, larger items. It's quick and easy. And again, if you let uh, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly's bakery department do the cooking for you, all you have to do is go in and uh, pick them up. So that is the uh, Cupcake Cutie Cups. Um, the next item I would like to show you is how you can build your own patriotic flag with um, food. What you'll need first of all is a tray of some kind. I just <clears throat> used a little baking pan, but you might have a decorative tray that would work. You need a clear either plastic or glass container that is going to hold the blueberries, which we're going to um, place in the bowl in the upper left-hand corner there. I didn't practice doing this backwards, so we're going to see how this works. You want to start out with um, some strawberries. Again, I picked these up at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and the strawberries there have been super sweet and extra delicious. And you're just going to make a row of berries going across the top. Then again, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly um, frosted pretzels, again, to get that white color. And we're going to just um, lay those in a row across the top. You know, you can get really creative just by going through um, your kitchen pantry uh, to find red, white, and blue foods. Um, let's see. Now we're going to do some cherries. I noticed that uh, cherries were available at the pig this week. And um, you could use raspberries also in here for the red. Um, if you prefer, or you could just do all, uh, all strawberries if you wanted. You could slice the tops off the strawberries, and um, we're going to just get this in here, okay, and we'll use up the rest of these. Then you're going to make another row of white across. And again, a reminder, if you aren't able to view the entire program today, you can always go back and um, check out the video tab at dailydodge.com. And you can, you'll be able to see, we'll have the, um, the instructions for how to put all of these crafts together on uh, the page as well. Then we're going to do another row of strawberries here. And so again, the strawberries could be sliced, you could use raspberries, um, you could use just all of the same, or you can mix up the fruit so that uh, you have um, a fun combination. And then people can just snack on these um, throughout the afternoon and evening. So we've got uh, your patriotic flag. We need to take one more break, and we'll be back with one more craft. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. And I have one more craft that I'd like to show you. Uh, and then just a reminder, at 10.05 after the news break, we do have um, Bill Lysis from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly coming in, and we do have a special guest that will also be here. So we'll be introducing uh, that special guest to you. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned. Again, if you're watching, dailydodge.com. Um, on the video tab, you can go to that if you haven't been watching, or you can just listen to us at uh, um, AM 1430 WBEV, and you can tell your friends. They can v check out this video even after it's happened because we will have that up on our website. Just give us about an hour or so after the program, um, and we'll have that ready for you to view. One more project. Look around your house. You might have candles that work uh, with your color scheme for whatever the season is. I had these left over from Christmas and I thought, oh, this might work because I had trouble finding pillar candles here in town. I did find two small ones and what I did, they looked like this when I first purchased them, but I just picked up some little stickers, um, patriotic, red, white, and blue. They're red and blue that we're going to use. And the kids would have fun with this. You just sort of put the stickers on at random or in a certain pattern, or they could do their initial, or they could make a flag, whatever you wanted to do with that. And uh, you set those on. Uh, they're very easy to um, just peel off the sticker. And you can start, like you could do a, a row all the way around. Very simple, very easy. And if you find the uh, pillared candles, 
at different heights. Again, you can create a fun sense. You can add different foods around that or maybe gather some red, red white, and blue items that you have available. And again, you want to keep in mind um, as we kick off this Memorial Day weekend that uh, the main reason for the holiday is to kind of salute our veterans and all of the war heroes um, that have uh, uh, done so much for us over the years and we really want to salute them and thank them for their service this weekend on Friday and Saturday at a lot of the retail places you'll find the Legion and Legion Auxiliary out selling poppies and I would just highly suggest that you make a contribution and uh, uh, purchase a poppy so that you can uh, uh, show your pride in the United States and as a way to thank all of those veterans. So kicking off our um, summertime season we will be coming up after the news break and uh, we've got a great show for you. The local dish with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly and Bill Lices will be coming up uh, after the news break so stay with us. John we'll send it back to you. Now back to Brenda live in our backyard at the Idea Exchange. That's right, John. We are here out in the back area, and it's a little breezy, but we're dealing with it. This is a brand new um, experiment with us. We've done the uh, video broadcast inside in our new broadcasting studio, but this is the first time we've taken it outside. At first, we were worried it might be raining. It's a perfect day to be outside, except it's just a little bit breezy, but I do want to welcome Bill Lysis of uh, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly to our local dish today. Once a month, we get together with Bill, and Bill, you've been on vacation, haven't you? I have, I have. Did you have a nice time? I had an excellent time. Where did you go? I went to Oregon. Okay. Uh, beautiful weather. Uh, went to the beach. Uh, a little mountain lake there, saw some friends, my sister-in-law. It was great. Okay. Was great. Well, we are putting you back to work as soon as you get back, because I think you got back last night, didn't you? I did, 4.30. Oh, yeah. 4.30 yesterday. <laughs> so, so we've got you uh, here doing grilling because of the fact that um, um, it is uh, uh, the start of the summer season. We have an echo here. Am I too close to the microphone? I'm not sure why we're doing Taking that. this why one. Why we've got that but um uh, we'll see if we can get that adjusted we also have a special guest and uh i think i'm just gonna maybe go around here and we'll bring on our special guest to come Yay. forward it is mr pig welcome mr pig i don't know can you get him in the shot are we still okay <laughs> Uh, we've got Mr. Pig here, and he was the one who was making all that noise. You were causing all those cars when they went by to toot their horns, and so that was the noise in the background. So you're going to be our entertainment during breaks, isn't that right? Okay, so we'll let you have just a little bit of uh, resting time right now while we put Bill to work. So, Bill, what are we cooking today? I'm, uh, first, I'm going to start with a cedar plank salmon. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to do a grilled corn salsa. I'm going to top the cedar plank salmon with that. All right. So we're going to get started right away. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you chose salmon and cooking on the planks. What, what purpose is that for and why do you like to cook that way? I like to cook on the planks. It, it really lends a nice smokiness to the salmon. I'm really not a big salmon eater. Oh, I love salmon. Do. I'll I'll unless take your smoked. entire portion then. then, then okay. Like it. So, so it really gives it a nice smoky flavor. Um, the uh, Native Americans used to cook it this way to preserve it, and it actually kind of started in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. They would they would use they would use one of these, and just kind of tack the whole side of the salmon on there, start a fire, and then. Uh, they would smoke it and preserve it for them. Okay. Um, and so what do you have to do to prep it? I'll let you kind of get prepping and while okay. you're talking. Um, do you have to soak the cedar in anything like wine or anything like that? Well, that's a good idea. I soaked it in water. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you could soak it in wine. You could soak it in water. Um, I just did this in water for maybe 20 minutes. Okay. Which is going to help when you put it on the grill so it doesn't start to burn up. I do have a, a spray bottle and I'll check it every so often and if the edges kind of start on fire I'll just spray it a little bit. Okay so we'll let you get to it and I don't know would it be I, I'm just checking with my tech crew here would it be better if I just hold the microphone over to him or are you picking it up okay all right just we'll we'll just make sure that you talk lo loud enough Bill okay all right 
So we're going to put the salmon on the plank and then put that right on the hot coals. Now, um, grilling with um, a charcoal grill, um, do you prefer that over gas grill? I prefer the I prefer the flavor of the charcoal. I would say for this particular one, you know, for some people it might be a little easier on a gas grill. Okay. Just put it on and close it. I, I put it off to the side a little bit um, so it's not over the coals directly. Okay. Because so I'm going to cover it. Okay. So we are going to let him um, do some seasonings. You're using... I'm also going to, I want to mention, I'm going to use this seasoning I got from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and it's specifically for cedar plank salmon. It's a rub. Um, you can also put it on chicken and those types of things. Okay, all right. So cedar plank salmon rub, you can get that at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. And you know, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly has such a great seafood section. You can get salmon, you can get shrimp, tilapia, and whenever they have their um, seafood sale, with their truckload seafood sale, and I know they do that a few times a year, I love going to that. And if you have never been to that, you want to make sure you mark that on the calendar the next time it happens because you get the freshest fish. That's when I, that's when I always buy my salmon and I stock up on salmon. Um, do you have, can you tell us about what you're going to do next? Yes, I, I did put the ear of corn on there to, to get that. Oh, to get it started. To get it started okay. so that will cool down a little bit and I can make the uh, salsa with it. Okay. I also wanted to mention if you can you can pick these up at your local uh, home improvement store. And I, I also wanted to suggest if you wanted to do like a whole side of salmon, you could put the whole side of salmon on here, cool it down, use it for a party, um, or just serve it warm for more than one person. Okay. But you want, it, you want to make sure that you get the untreated, uh, and they're called cedar shingles, the untreated one. Untreated cedar mm -hmm. shingles. Okay. And then, you, and then you cut it to size for your specific if you're doing filet. The, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Or if you're doing just the full half salmon, you can put that you on put the, the larger whole, one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what kind of vegetables do you have here? Uh, because now we're going to work on the, the salsa part, correct. right? Okay. I have a red onion, some Roma tomatoes, a lime, some cilantro. I'm going to uh, dice these, mince that, and add it with the grilled corn. Okay. With a little salt and pepper also. Okay. So while you are doing that, I would, um, I don't know if I can, if you can, if you can talk and chop at the same time <laughs> with a, with, gonna... <laughs> without uh, getting that uh, knife to, um, uh, too wild there. I love cilantro. I know people either love cilantro or they hate cilantro, mm -hmm. but I am in the uh, the category that loves cilantro because I love the fact that it has um, just that little bit of citrusy taste, but um, but it also has a, another layer to it, and it just really adds to whatever it is that you're cooking, mm -hmm. whether you're making um, a salsa or just. Um, uh, adding it in uh, as a um, uh, to 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 add a little bit more flavor to whatever you might be cooking, and so you are dicing up the onion right now. And this salsa is this um, something that then needs to go on the grill also, or is it just going to go over the salmon and the corn when we're done? It's just going to go over the salmon at at room temperature. Okay, all right. And when we're cooking on a charcoal grill. You want to make sure, of course, that the coals are hot enough. And now I had heard that there was a way that you could test to make sure that they're hot enough by um, just putting your hand over the coals. And if you hold it for four seconds mm -hmm. at four inches above the coals, and then you can't, you can't keep it there, then they're hot enough. Is that yeah, how, I, the, how does that I, go? I, I, I've, I've, I've heard that You've also. You've heard that also. How I, do you know when the coals are done? I kind of just know. No. <laughs> You've been doing <laughs> it long when enough. So. When they're nice and white and... And I also like to cover it to get the grate hot so oh. that it helps uh, for the food not to stick to it. Okay, all right. On a, ga on a gas grill, I like to bring it up to about 400 degrees if you have a thermometer on your gas grill before I put anything on it. Okay, well, we need to take a quick break, a two-minute break, and we'll let you keep dicing and chopping to work on that salsa. We'll be back after these messages. Thank you very much, John. We are cooking outside of the radio station today. We are doing our local dish with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly out in the back parking lot. And uh, Bill Lysis is here with me, as is Mr. Pig. And um, 
we are making, well, Bill is making, uh, cedar plank salmon. I love salmon. He must have known that. And uh, he's also put corn on the grill, an ear of corn, and he's making a corn salsa to go with that and the uh, salmon. So uh, uh, pick us up from where we left off, Bill. Where are you at right now? I'm just almost just finishing up the salsa up. I'm going to take the corn off of the grill, finish this with a little salt and pepper, and it'll be done. Okay, so our first portion using the uh, salmon, um, and again, we mentioned earlier that you can get the um, Piggly Wiggly Cedar Plank sa uh, Sweet and Smoky Salmon Rub in the meat department at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and uh, this will flavor up the salmon really, really nicely. But Bill said you could also use it on chicken or other things that you might be grilling just to give it a sweet and smoky flavor to it. So we've got onions, tomatoes, cilantro in the uh, cilantro in mm -hmm. the salsa, right? Yes. I'm okay. going to go take the corn off the grill and I'll take that off the cob and then I'll add that to that. Okay. And I should uh, mention that coming up after we get the salmon and the uh, corn and salsa done, we are, uh, Bill's going to be doing some New York ribeye steaks. And of course, as I mentioned, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly Seafood Department uh, is extraordinary. Uh, their meat department is also great. I love going there to get just the individual marinated chicken breasts or the burgers, uh, their pub burgers. I can pick up one or two, <clears throat> however many I want. And what I usually do is make those all at one time and then I package them up and put them in the freezer so that within the next week or two, I can just take one out, microwave it, and it tastes just like I took it off the, uh, the grill. I don't usually use a grill because I, I'm not really comfortable feeling that I know how to use the charcoal grill uh, real well, but I have a small, a, lar a fairly large George Foreman that I like to use, and so I will cook things up that way. Or sometimes I use the broiler in wintertime too, which you could do uh, with um, with the steaks. So we've got the the uh, fresh corn. Corn's going in. <clears throat> the corn is going into the uh, salsa. And um, what else, anything else we need to add to that? No, I, I, I put the lime juice in there, a little salt and pepper, finished it. And, and so we are, we are all set with that. And of course, that is going to make just a real colorful addition to uh, your meal when it's ready. You've got the, the yellow, the green, the red, and uh, the white from the yeah. onion with the salmon and uh, with the, the corn that you would be cooking as well. So um, I think we, we need to pause and take one more break. We'll get ready for the uh, meat portion. We'll be back after these messages. Back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. Thank you very much, John. Mr. Pig is with us. Bill Lysis is with us today. We are the uh, doing the local dish outside this uh, station, and we are grilling, getting ready for the uh, beginning of the summertime grilling season. And Bill put a salmon on the grill. Bill, do you season that before you put it on the grill, or is it better to season it afterwards? You season it before you put it on the grill. I just forgot to season it. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to tell anybody. I, I mean, I mean, you can, but you know, <laughs> for safety. For okay, safety so <laughs> you, you want to season it first, put it on the yes. put it on the plank, and then mm -hmm. put the uh, plank on mm -hmm. on the grill. And as you can see, it looks like it is done to perfection. I can't wait to uh, try that. And then you would just put the corn salsa on the side with that. I for presentation, I would put it over it. Um, Over just, it, okay. yeah, and, and I'll mm -hmm. do that. I, wa I wanted to mention too. You, you don't have to. You don't have to flip this. You put. You put this on the plank. You put it on the grill. You close the cover, and you know seven, eight minutes or so should be done, depending on the thickness and how you and how you like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can eat this kind of medium rareish, but that's <laughs> how I kind of like mine. Um, and I also wanted to mention. Um, Use the skin. Use a skin-on salmon. Don't take the skin off because this will slide right off the plank. Or you can serve it on the plank like this to, for presentation, okay, also gonna, for your guests. I was going to ask that. Yes. But uh, this, yeah, this will this will come right off of the off of the skin. So then it's all it's all set to go. So if you're going to be doing some cooking with seafood, you might want to do the um, salmon that Bill has shown us today, the cedar plank salmon. Use the um, 
of the seasoning from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and of course get your salmon. Oh, that looks beautiful. And, and corn corn pairs really well with salmon. Uh huh. So it, so those flavors should should go real well with that. Okay. Well, we want to get the steak on the grill so that it's cooking mm -hmm. during the uh, news break at the bottom of the hour. So I'm gonna uh, bring that over. Okay. We're gonna put that maybe right in front here. Um, and you are using... Maybe Mr. Pig can help me. Sure. Oh, his, oh. his hands are a little... His hands are a little... They're a little big. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, so... Don't drop we, it. Yeah. We've got a New York uh, ribeye that you're going to be cooking and some compound... Uh, New York strip. New York strip. Sorry. Okay. New York strip and uh, some compound butter that compound you brought butter. and um, made already for us. Mm -hmm. So um, in one minute, can you tell us about the... Um, the butter and there is that, that what you're going to baste the meat with? I'm actually going to top it when it's done oh, with okay. the butter, and it'll okay. just melt into the steak once it's once it's done grilling. Uh, real quick, one minute I have. One minute. Okay, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> the compound butter I made ahead. Um, I put thyme and rosemary in it. You can put any herbs you like. Uh, uh, you can put lemon zest in it. Um, you kind of soften the butter, fold in your herbs. And then you can freeze it. Uh, it freezes very well. And then you can just take a, a piece off of it as you need it. Okay. And so you could put that in a pan if you were sauteing something, right? Sure. Right? Sure. But mm -hmm. otherwise, you like to use it to top it onto the cooked meat. The right? cooked meat, yeah. Normally, yes. compound butters, you do that. You could do it with the salmon, too. Okay. A butter would go really well with that, too. You could, you could top this with and the salmon. And so how are we seasoning the meat? I'm just going to do salt and pepper. Uh, okay. Real simple, salt and freshly ground black pepper. And this is a, a certified Angus uh, New York strip that I got, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. It's in a, that's the only place you can get the certified Angus beef. Certified Angus beef is, is great because they have these strict standards um, when, they, when they grade them. And this one is close to a to like a prime steak, okay. and you know you know that because you'll see the marbling in it with the fat in it, All which right. is going to give it a lot more flavor. Oh, okay, a lot All more right. flavor. Yep, certified Angus beef only at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly and fine restaurants, as Daryl Shainfeld always likes to say when we are talking about it uh, on my segment with him for the Idea Exchange. So a little bit of salt and pepper uh, is going on the um, New York strip on both sides. We're going to put that on the grill. And then how long is that going to take, uh, Bill? Um, I like my steak medium rare. Yep, me so, too. Me too. So three, four minutes per side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we will be cooking that during the break. We're going to send it back to you, John. We will uh, take a break for news and sports, and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. All right. Thanks a lot, Brenda. Now let's go back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. And we are doing the local dish, local dish, local dish here outside of the radio station with Bill Lysis from the uh, Della Department at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and with Mr. Mr. Pig. Pig. He decided to join us today too. I think he came just to try all the food, right, Mr. Pig? Yes. Although right now on the grill, guess what we have? We have brats. We have a surprise for you. Yep. Pork brats. Pork brats. Ho homemade at the at the meat department. <laughs> Are you fired up? No. No, you don't. As like As you can pork see, brats? Mr. Pig is not a vegetarian. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got those cooking, and of course, you can get the um, almost world famous Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly brats at, of course, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, and uh, Bill has those cooking right now. As you can see, the steak is finished. It smells delicious. While we were at break. I ran to the kitchen and got two forks so that we could uh, test out the salmon and the steak. And right now, um, you're going to add the compound butter, I'm just right? Top the compound butter with it. And that's while the steak is hot, so that it will just sort of melt kind of into. Melt and melt spread over the steak. Yep, you can see it as it uh, just mm -hmm. is kind of slowly softening and melting. And um, then we still have to um, <clears throat> show the, the kebabs. Fruit kebabs. Because you're going to do fruit kebabs, and you're mm -hmm. going to put those on the grill as well? I am for <clears throat> just a minute or two, uh, give it a little a little flavor. Oh. Um, I'm also going to put a couple peaches on there. No, I don't know if anyone's ever grilled any peaches, but I love grilled peaches. You, you cut them in half, you take the pit out. Uh, put them on the grill, get some nice marks on them, and maybe put some butter, maybe some cinnamon on it. It's a oh, nice yeah. little, you know, sweet dessert, kind of. 
because it I've, goes well with pork. I've done well. grilled um, pineapple. I think that's grilled the first kind of fruit great too. that people think of when they're going to be grilling. But mm -hmm. a peach is another great idea. Or doing the fruit kebabs. Now, again, I would have thought, oh, you do the fruit kebab cold, but grilling it up with, like you mm -hmm. said, maybe just. Are you going to use a little bit of cinnamon on that too? Or you, you could. I'm not. I'm not going to today. Just I'm just to, going to grill it. Okay. Yep. Um, so take us to the next step of what right. we need to know. Well, I got the fruit from the from the produce department. Uh, they do a great great job. They they have containers like this out there all the time of fresh cut fruit. Uh, they did some up for the holidays. I don't know if we're having a competition this time because I saw you did a flag. But <laughs> yeah, I'm right. thinking that might be maybe maybe my flag. This, did they you win last week? Um, well, I don't know. I think it was a tie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I think it was a tie. I'm going to say it's a tie so that you'll come back uh, again, okay. right? Okay. So anyway, they do this. You know, it's in a flag. They also do stars, uh, uh, red, white, and blue stars, where there's fruit already in it. And they just kind of displayed this like a little flag in there, sure. cut it up. And that way you get a, a variety of different fruits for whatever people's... Uh, uh, favorites are they're mm -hmm. all in there and the cut fruit program is so great if you want to stop in the morning on your way to work so that you have a nice fruit salad you don't have to worry about uh, cutting up all the fruit that's all done for you and I think both green salads and fruit salads taste so much better when somebody else does the work if you're chopping and then you sit down to that uh, fresh fruit or the the green salad it's okay, but if somebody else does all that prep work for you, it is 10 mm. times better. So check out the uh, fresh fruit uh, and all of the great produce at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. They, they just got these uh, peaches in recently, the first of the season, uh, peaches from South Carolina. Okay. South Carolina. Yeah, and I love peaches too. So we, you've got uh, strawberries, watermelon, pineapple, and peaches on the... peaches the, on the kebab. On the kebab. Mm -hmm. Now, on that skewer... Um, you're supposed to soak those too, right? Before you put them on the grill, I yes. think. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and like if you're doing vegetables or shrimp or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be so quick, it really yeah, isn't going right, to make Yeah, okay. But normally, but like if you were doing vegetables or uh, meat pieces, doing like meat and uh, veggie kebabs, mm -hmm. you want to soak the skewers. I think it's 30 minutes in water because that way uh, they're not going to start, the, the skewer is not going to start on fire and you'll be able to uh, easily take that off the grill. So our compound butter has, uh, has melted. It looks delicious. Everything it smells so delicious, delicious as well. And uh, my large steak knife, you can your use. large steak knife, <laughs> so I can so I can try some of that. We do also want to talk about um, the deli department because mm -hmm. that is uh, your main domain, right? That's yes, that's where I uh, that's where I work. I brought some pico de gallo that we make. This is mm, a that smells this so is good. a summer. So this is we're making this for the summer. It's a summer spaghetti salad. Okay. Tomatoes. Uh, red onion, green peppers, kind of an Italian vinaigrette in there. I brought tropical fruit, fluff, and then this is one of the popular ones, the BLT, uh, oh, the BLT, BLT salad. salad. Right. So you can, you know, if you want to stay outside, enjoy the weather, concentrate on your grilling, you pick the sides up and you don't have to be in the house cooking. That's true. Or if you have uh, graduation parties or any type of large gatherings coming up, you can always check out Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly, call the deli department, and you can arrange and order uh, veggie trays, cheese trays, fruit trays. Um, they, Like I said, they can do the work for you so that you don't have to. And Mr. Pig, you're probably always when you're at the store, you're always working hard, aren't you? Yes, yes, that's what I thought. So we've got everything. Oh, that looks really good. So we'll put that on there. Just a little bit of um, a charbroiling on And you'll there. taste it, and it, and it actually it actually brings out the uh, heat or grilling, brings out the sugars in the fruit, so it makes it even sweeter. Okay, all Kind of right. like it car caramelizes it a little bit. And, and I can't wait to try those peaches because I think that would be uh, uh, delicious as well. So um, we do have a little bit of extra time here. So recapping, first of all, I just want to tell you about some of the, um, uh, the craft ideas that, uh, um, that I did. And that was um, the, the edible red, white, and blue. You just get some red licorice, the uh, white um, uh, pretzels, and 
separate your patriotic M&Ms to just the blue, and you've got red, white, and blue foods that people can munch on. I went to the Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly Bakery, had them make uh, cupcakes for me with patriotic sprinkles, I specified that. And then you just put those in a little plastic wine glass, fill the bottom portion with the patriotic M&Ms, and then just kind of slip in your cupcake and you've got really cute individual desserts. And I know when we were taking our break, we did get some uh, comments from people who have been watching our video broadcast and they said that they are definitely gonna try some of these, um, uh, some of these uh, ideas. Again, another quick easy idea is the patriotic pops. Just find a container of some kind and, um, and you put a piece of styrofoam in the container and then just add the red and the blue um, Tootsie Pops and you have a great, um, a great centerpiece and again you can uh, give those out as party favors either at the beginning of your party or at the end before everyone goes home. And uh, while I was talking, Bill, you were doing a little bit of a uh, plating, right? Or were you tasting well, I, I, too? I thought, I thought we could start tasting. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure we can. <laughs> because I want to try the salmon and the, salmon. the okay. steak. And um, you'll be able to view all of this at dailydodge.com. Click on the video tab. You'll be able to check out all of the um, instructions for how to make the crafts. Plus, I know Bill is going to uh, get the recipe to me for the salmon. That was pretty easy, though, Bill, right? It was. It, it was, it was. Um, just use, getting the cedar planks, your mm -hmm. salmon, and then you seasoned it with the Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. With the salmon rub. Salmon rub. Mm -hmm. And uh, you put that on, and cooking that salmon is about how long? Depending on the thickness of the salmon, of course. Eight to ten minutes, About eight I would say, and eight. it you know it depends on the charcoal and the or gas and, or the gas or whatever, grill. right? Mm -hmm. So and you can kind of watch it when it flakes, uh, you know that it is ready to try. Mm -hmm. And of course the uh, salsa, we you did that with just uh, the corn, cilantro, tomatoes, and uh, onion chopped and onion. up, and a little lime up. juice, mm -hmm. and a little bit of lime juice, and a little bit of salt. I think you used salt right? and pepper, salt yes. and pepper, <clears throat> and then of course the steak. Uh, Bill just seasoned that with salt and pepper, put it on the grill, and then when it came off the grill, made that compound butter and just put a, um, probably, what was that, about a tablespoon and a half or about, mm. about a oh, tablespoon? tablespoon and a half. Um, mm. And let that just sort of melt over the top. So um, we are going to taste test as we go off air because I know we have a brat fry remote that we have to get to and we have to hear from a few of our partners. So I am going to try the salmon first. Mm, that is really good. The steak's can, very tender. You can taste the sweet and um, uh, the smokiness, smokiness from that rub. So, um, Mr. Pig, we'll let you try some of these in just a or little bit. Or maybe a brat. Or maybe a brat. We'll save They're the brats done. for you. Thanks for tuning in today <laughs> to The Local Dish with Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. We are going to uh, send it back to John Kraft. All right, thanks a lot. If you guys deliver, I'm in Control Room B, second floor.